Hello everyone, welcome to City Talk. I'm Thermese Bevel. It's official, the Atlanta Braves are moving to Cobb County for the start of the 2017 baseball season. In a four to one vote, county commissioners approved $300 million in public money to support the massive project. The total cost of the new stadium and surrounding entertainment district is estimated at $672 million. Braves general manager John Sureholt spoke to the media after the vote passed. This is a most significant and historic day for our franchise. This gold standard franchise has joined with a gold standard county as we plan our future together. The new Braves complex includes a 41,500 seat open air stadium, retail, residential units, restaurant space, an adjacent hotel, and an amphitheater. Mayor Kasim Reed, Vice President Joe Biden, and Senator Johnny Isaacson were in Central America for a tour of the Panama Canal. The delegation received an update on the canal's expansion. The mayor is working with state and federal leaders to expand the Port of Savannah so larger ships passing through the canal will be able to dock in Georgia, providing an economic boost. Estimated costs for the expansion hover around $660 million. Governor Nathan Dill says Georgia will kick in $231 million. The state is lobbying Washington to fund $400 million towards the project. Drivers along Georgia 400 can stop squirreling away quarters for the toll booths. Collection of the tolls ended just in time for Thanksgiving travelers. In 1993, Georgia 400 was extended so commuters in North Fulton and Forsyth could have easier access to Atlanta. The tolls were used to pay for those bonds. The state paid the final bill and the last toll was taken by no other than the man who accepted the first toll. Thank go. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to put it in the booth, okay? In 2010, when I was campaigning for the office of governor, I stood in front of these very booths and promised that in my first term as governor, the tolls would come down. And today, we follow through with that promise. Now that tolls have ended, the booths will be demolished. Work should be completed in January. Until then, motorists are using the former Peach Pass lanes. The city of Atlanta got a perfect score on the 2013 Municipal Equality Index. Atlanta is among 25 cities nationwide to receive 100 points on this rating system that measures lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender inclusion in municipal government. Mayor Reed, Councilmember Alex Wan, the Human Rights Campaign, and Georgia Equality acknowledged LGBT achievements that are being made here in Georgia and across the country. Today, for me, Atlanta shows its best side. It sends a message to our LGBT community, and more importantly, to other municipalities in the region, that we are a city that welcomes, respects, dignifies, creates opportunities, progress, and hope, and more, most importantly, one that cherishes equality. What I know is allowing folks to love who they want to love and have committed relationships creates a stronger city, a healthier community, and a better United States of America. A combination of local, state, and national efforts are steadily increasing LGBT rights. On our website, there is now a section devoted to services the city provides to the LGBT community. It includes employee benefits, domestic partner coverage, and legal protections. To find out what else is available, go to AtlantaGA.gov. The Edgewood community came together to support Atlanta police officer Christopher Smith, who was shot back in November while working an off-duty security job at the Edgewood Court Apartments. Smith suffered gunshot wounds to his face and leg. We're working to have a stronger bond between those who are living in that apartment complex and those who are living in the greater community so that we can work together for a safer Southeast Atlanta. Officer Smith continues to recover from his injuries. There is a reward for information leading to the arrest of the gunman. Dozens of firefighters were recently honored at the fourth annual Breakfast with Our Bravest. The Medal of Valor was awarded to two firefighters for rescuing an unconscious homeowner from a fully engulfed house fire. The Award of Merit and Firefighter of the Year were also awarded, with Firefighter of the Year going to Lieutenant Mike Williams. Special recognition is certainly a morale booster and uh, when the members of our department actually nominate their peers, it just builds a lot of excitement and enthusiasm within the department. The event was hosted by the Atlanta Fire Foundation. 
you'll now have an easier way to pay for parking. The city of Atlanta will allow you to pay meter times through a mobile app. It's called Park Mobile and it's available on Apple, Android, Windows and Blackberry phones. There is a 35 cent fee each time you use the system. You can also extend parking meter times unless the time on the meter has expired. A pilot program of the pay by phone option is currently running in downtown on Baker and Lucky Streets. An official citywide launch is planned for February. Councilman Kwanzaa Hall and those in the old fourth ward met with the Office of Planning and Central Atlanta Progress for the last community meeting to update zoning regulations for the MLK Landmark District, which hasn't been changed in 30 years. This is the only Martin Luther King Historic District in the country, so we want to make sure that we protect that, but at the same time unlock the value so that we can um, have new investment to come into the corridor. Hall says this community-driven process helps ensure that the area gets the right kind of new investment that protects Sweet Auburn's historic resources. Mayor Reed was the guest speaker at a recent Northwest Community Alliance meeting. He talked about the new Falcon Stadium, the Braves' impending move to Cobb County, and budgetary matters, including city pensions. We passed the most sweeping pension reform uh, in the history of the city of Atlanta and one of the most sweeping reform measures in America. So what was the result? The result is that we have saved $27 million a year. With those savings, the city was able to end furloughs and to give employees their first raises in several years. Public Works is embarking on a campaign to educate residents and business owners on how to properly recycle. City Talk's Troy Danicus has more on this initiative and how recycling may lower your solid waste bill. Hey, how you doing, ma'am? We're going out and knocking on doors in various communities to teach people about the um, importance of recycling and about the city's recycling program, Cartlanta. Jacqueline Bridges works for the Public Works Department where she coordinates Cartlanta. Recycling is an important issue for city leaders as the urban landscape gets greener. It's also a source of revenue for the city. Well, just to let you know, um, recycling, it's not only good for the environment, but it helps to create jobs right here in Atlanta. The more that we recycle, the more revenue that is generated for the city, uh, which could result in savings for our customers. Every ton of garbage dumped in a landfill costs the city $29, but the city gets paid $30 per ton of recyclables. Talk about going green. Potential revenue from recycling can earn the city $1.2 million a year, but not every ton of recyclables gets processed. We also want to make sure that residents understand that um, it's important to recycle properly, and by that I mean do not contaminate your recycling with items such as trash, clothing, and yard trimmings. The city uses single stream recycling, which means you can dump all of your loose recyclables into one bin. The sorting process is done at the recycling facility. While contamination is not a big problem, the city wants to get ahead of it before it becomes one. Truckloads of contaminated recyclables get kicked back to the city. In fact, the city's recycling processor treats the, the contamination just like garbage, so it ends up going to the landfill anyway, uh, which reduces the amount of revenue that's, that's returned back to the city. So here we have our first step in our process where the loader will take your materials and put them onto the belt. Ronnie Page is a program manager for WastePro, the company that processes the city's recyclables. She gave us a tour of the facility and how the single stream process works. We're going to hand sort your materials that come in. After hand sorting the materials, the cardboard and paper are taken away from the smaller items that fall through the bottom. Any non-recyclable material that gets into the machinery can halt processing. One of the biggest problems? Plastic bags. The worst thing about plastic bags is that for the industry, they're very bad for our machinery. They get caught up in the machinery, they can get caught up in the trucks. That's why they say it's important to keep your recyclables loose and not bagged. So what can you recycle? It's very important that the right material goes into the container. Plastic, any type of glass, all your paper items, your aluminum cans as well as your steel cans. For City Talk, I'm Troy Danicus. For information on Cartlanta and the city's recycling programs, go to cartlanta.org or visit them on Facebook. Atlanta Public Schools held its College and Career Motivation Week on all of its campuses to make students aware of career opportunities and to inspire them to focus on success in school as they plan for college. The city of Atlanta was well represented. It was great. We had the watershed department, parks and recs, police, fire, planning, procurement, just an array of different departments here today talking to the kids and as, the, as you can see in the background they're still talking 
about all the careers they can have. It's really important that they pay attention today so that they can um, replace us um, in the future. The week also included workshops on how to apply for college, how to apply for jobs, and interviewing for a job. The 2015 Summit of Nobel Peace Prize laureates will be held in Atlanta, and Mayor Reed was at the pre-announcement ceremony. He joined a host of international leaders and celebrities, including media mogul Ted Turner. This will only be the second time the Nobel Summit will be in the U.S. The event also included a performance by students from the Ron Clark Academy and soprano Monica Yunus, daughter of 2006 Nobel Prize winner Professor Muhammad Yunus. We've hosted the World Series, the 96 Olympics, and other numerous world-class events. And so for being awarded the opportunity to host the global leaders and former Nobel winners is another feather in our cap. The summit is November 15th through the 19th in 2015. Hundreds of turkeys are given away to help Atlanta families enjoy a great holiday meal. And the Director of International Affairs gives us an update on that office. Stay with us. International Affairs Director Claire Angel is with us today. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Atlanta hasn't had an official International Relations Office since 2008. Now that it has been reopened, what is the central mission of that office? So the Mayor's Office of International Affairs' central mission is to increase Atlanta's international footprint. However, uh, in reopening this office, Mayor Reed's main priority is to create job opportunities for Atlantans. And that's the reason why my team and I dedicate a majority of our resources in helping Atlanta-based companies in their exporting activities and attracting foreign direct investment to the city of Atlanta. Uh, we also support the activities of our international community, including our sister city commission, our consular corps, and our binational chamber of commerce. Uh, we also help in attracting large-scale international events to the city of Atlanta, and uh, we're really happy that Atlanta was chosen to host in 2015 the World Summit of Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Uh, and, uh, and so that's really the, the main, and we also want to promote the sharing of best practices with cities around the globe so that we make sure that Atlanta has the very best that the world has to offer. We like to pride ourselves on being an international city. What does that mean exactly? How international is Atlanta? Atlanta is most definitely an international city and, and actually uh, Foreign Policy magazine publishes every two years the Global Cities Index which uh, ranks uh, city as per their international scope and Atlanta is the 35th most global cities in the world. Uh, in the U.S. only New York, Washington, Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles and Boston are more international than Atlanta is. So we're definitely an international city. Uh, in terms of facts and figures we have a foreign born population of 700,000. 2,700 foreign investment ha has created about 130,000 jobs uh, in Atlanta. We have international organizations such as CNN, uh, Duke Carter Center, CARE, the world busiest airport. So Atlanta is most definitely international. Can we do better? Definitely, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Your office is working on several key projects. One of those is the Atlanta Metropolitan Export Plan. Tell us a little bit about that. So uh, Atlanta, thanks to uh, Mayor Reed and the efforts of Invest Atlanta, has been chosen by the Brookings Institution to participate in a Global Cities Initiative organized jointly by, uh, with GP Morgan and Chase. What does it mean is that uh, Brookings Institution help us create a more favorable environment uh, for exports. Uh, we believe that if Atlanta companies export more, they will produce more and so they will need to recruit uh, more uh, local people here in Atlanta. So right now we're conducting a survey to ask Atlanta-based companies what kind of obstacle they face in their exporting activities so that we can establish a set of recommendations to support their activities more. We hope to be more export friendly uh, and to grow our city through exports. Another project you have is the Welcoming America initiative which helps to integrate immigrants into the community. How did that plan come about? So Mayor Reed uh, has announced on October 22nd that Atlanta would participate in the Welcoming uh, Cities initiative. And uh, Mayor Reed really, if we want to be an international city, if we want to attract more international talent, more foreign direct investment, our 
existing international community have to feel treasure and at home. So that's really what the Welcoming Cities is all about, is to create a more favorable environment for immigrants and to really create more interaction between native Atlanta and, and those new waves of immigration that have come uh, throughout the last few years. Atlanta has not a long history of immigration. Actually, up until 1980, only 50,000 Atlantans were foreign born and now we're up to 700,000. Atlanta is the second fastest growing uh, immigrant population in the country after Baltimore, so we really have to make sure that those people feel at home and feel as Atlanta and any of us. Okay, Claire Angel, thank you so much. Thank you. A local church opens its food pantry to feed more than 700 people, and Thanksgiving travel exceeds expectations. The world's busiest airport saw an increase in passengers. Back in a moment. Council President Caesar Mitchell joined Kate's Club members for their second annual memory walk. Kate's Club is a nonprofit organization that helps children after the death of a loved one. For 10 years, the club has helped grieving kids express their feelings and develop healthy coping skills. Kate's Club has touched the lives of so many families by providing social, recreational, and emotional support. The men of Morehouse rolled up their sleeves to feed the homeless. Morehouse's fourth annual It's on the House is a campus-wide effort where dozens of students serve dinner to those needing a hot meal. Haircuts, personal hygiene kits, winter coats, and medical consultations were all on the house. We all have neighbors in need, especially these times it's hard, and especially around the holidays. Food is such a way of connecting with family, traditions, community, um, and sense of self-worth. And I think it's really important not only to support the college students who put this together, but to bring young volunteers to show them that giving to our community at large is really important. The event is Morehouse's effort to end world hunger by starting right here in Atlanta. Many people celebrate the holidays by giving back to the community with turkey giveaways, by helping senior citizens, or giving toys to children. Well, rapper T.I. and his Grand Hustle crew are no different. They were at the Adamsville Recreation Center with Mayor Reed and Councilman C.T. Martin for a turkey giveaway. Every year, this group teams up to give turkeys to Atlanta families. We want to make sure that everybody feels good uh, this Thanksgiving and these through these holidays. As long as God blesses me with the ability, with the means, I will continue to give back to this neighborhood because you guys made me who I am today. The free turkeys, the collard greens, and the music brought happy faces and smiles of gratitude. The Atlanta chapter of the NFL Former Players Association donated turkeys to those in District 2. Members of the organization were in the Old Fourth Ward to lend a hand to families at the Henderson Place Apartments. They gave away over 60 turkeys. Folks tend to forget that there are a lot of people who need help. Um, and anybody can be in that situation. You just never know um, where you might be in life. And we just want to make sure that we share the love that we have and that we're able to include everybody in this particular season that everybody gets to eat and we all eat together. The giveaway was in partnership with Councilman Hall's Year of Boulevard Initiative. Hundreds of Northwest Atlanta families received food assistance for Thanksgiving. Councilmember Felicia Moore joined Collins Memorial United Methodist Church for a community food distribution. Recipients had a choice of a free turkey or ham plus other dinner items. I just want to say happy holidays to everybody. It's such a blessing to be able to be here in District 9 and to, to be able to serve the community and work with Collins United Methodist Church on their Wednesday food giveaway. And this is a special one for Thanksgiving. Collins Memorial also has a permanent food pantry and provides food assistance to families on a regular basis. Mayor Reed helped out with Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless's annual Thanksgiving meal. The Georgia World Congress Center was packed as hundreds received gifts of food. But food wasn't the only gifts residents took away from the event. And we don't just have food today. We have uh, access to health screenings. We have clothing. We have showers for folks. We also have hairdressers. 
uh, and, and beauty style. And so, you know, this is just, uh, it's one of my favorite days to be there. More Thanksgiving travelers pass through Hartsfield-Jackson this year than airport officials initially predicted. A 3.3 increase was expected from 2012, but instead that number jumped to 5.6. That's 1.8 million passengers. The airport's busiest day was the Monday after Thanksgiving, with more than 280,000 travelers passing through Hartsfield-Jackson. The airport started roadway improvements, which will detour southbound drivers onto Airport Boulevard. Officials ask that all drivers obey the 25 mile an hour speed limit. That detour will be in effect until April. You can celebrate the holiday season at the Fernbank Museum with Winter Wonderland. That's next. Thousands of tailgaters turned out for the showdown between Georgia Tech and the University of Georgia. Throughout the 2013 season, UGA played through tough injuries and both teams entered this game with 7-4 records. The rivalry between the Bulldogs and the Yellow Jackets adds another one to the history books as Georgia overcame a 20-point deficit to win the game 41-34 in overtime. The holiday season always means there is plenty to do around town to lift our spirits. The Fernbank Museum is hosting its Winter Wonderland exhibit. 31 Christmas trees are decorated with symbols and traditions from around the world. But the displays don't start and stop with Christmas. Traditions that cross religious and cultural boundaries are represented on the trees as well. Each of our partners has an opportunity to choose something that they would like to focus on. Brazil is focusing on World Cup since uh, Brazil will host the World Cup next year. So those things are important um, to individuals in those particular countries and so they have the freedom to decorate how they choose. The museum also challenges visitors to spot unique decorations and ornaments on trees. Go to FernBankMuseum.org to download a copy of the Winter Wonderland Seek and Find Guide. The exhibit will be up until January 5th. Folks looking for a different twist on the Nutcracker headed over to Georgia Tech's first center to see Bell Ethnic Urban Nutcracker. It takes the 19th century ballet of a young girl who discovers the magic of Christmas through an enchanted Nutcracker doll and sets it in 1940s Sweet Auburn. This is the dance company's 20th year of the performance. It's enduring because it tells a traditional story of, 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 of the love and wonder and magic of the holiday season. And I think folks look for that and long for that in the midst of so, much, so many of the challenges that we face today. We say goodbye to former South African President Nelson Mandela, who passed away at the age of 95. Mandela spent 27 years in a South African prison for fighting against apartheid in that country. He was released in 1990 and four years later became their leader. Mandela won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993 and received 250 other awards as well. Thank you for allowing us to bring City Talk to you this past year. We've had a really good time giving you a look at Atlanta City Government. From all of us at ATL 26, stay safe and enjoy the holidays. We'll see you in 2014.